Good morning, people of YouTube. Hyundai is in the process of completely reinventing their crossover lineup, so we are spending the day with their second new CUV, the all-new 2019 Santa Fe. Special thanks to Gates Hyundai in Richmond for giving us access to this loaded Santa Fe Ultimate. If you're in the market for any new Hyundai, be sure to pay them a visit or check out the website link which we have provided in the video description. Like I said, this is the loaded model, but as always, the other trims will also be covered. So let's go ahead and check out the totally reimagined Santa Fe. So starting off here with the styling, the new Santa Fe couldn't possibly be more different than the outgoing model. Hyundai's previous swoopy look has been thoroughly vanquished in favor of a tight and sculpted design, especially here at the front. The grille itself looks pretty similar to the Kona, with the new trapezoidal shape and cascading design. It stays mostly the same through the trims, though the Ultimate does get a bronze finish across the top instead of regular chrome. That trim leads right into the headlights, which are by far the biggest departure. Hyundai has actually separated the unit into several pieces, with only the LED daytime running lights on the top, and then the actual headlights themselves mounted underneath. This second housing contains the turn signal and both the low and high beams, which are LED on the Limited and Ultimate and halogens on all the rest. The same also goes for the fog lights, which are included on all but the base trim. Moving on to the side, the new design makes it look much larger than the outgoing model, and indeed it has grown about 3 inches. Its 188 inch length is now more closely in line with the Nissan Murano and Ford Edge that it competes with. In the back, you continue to find the athletic and sophisticated design, with plenty of silver accents to add in contrast. The taillights also have a very upscale appearance, especially on the Limited and Up where they are LED with this really neat 3D look. And like the headlights, the turn signal is not a separate housing at the bottom. Finishing off the look is a silver bumper with a single exhaust pipe, and silver roof rails on the SEL Plus and Up. Overall, Hyundai has taken some risk with the design to stand out, but they did a good job of not going overboard and making it look too polarizing. Moving on to the wheels, there are two options for the lower half and upper half of the trims. These of course are the upper 18 inch alloys with an attractive grey contrast design. And although they're not available yet, there will also be optional 19s available for the Limited and Ultimate. The SE and SEL will still have alloy wheels, just 17 inches. Next up we have the mirrors, which are always power adjusting, manual folding, and heated, with turn signals coming on the Limited and up. You'll also find standard blind spot monitors on all the trims, which I believe is something that only Hyundai does in the class. And to go along with that, they also include pretty much every other safety system standard as well. You have rear cross traffic alert with auto braking, front automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, auto high beams, and a really neat feature that prevents you from opening the door if another car is approaching too closely. This is a very impressive suite of technologies that are oftentimes not even standard on luxury vehicles. Finally, the last thing to look at are the fuel ranges, which vary quite a bit even though they all have 18.8 gallon fuel tanks. Our front wheel drive model with the base engine can travel 470 miles, while a front wheel drive turbo model can go about 413 miles. Of course, adding all wheel drive will reduce those numbers, and they all use regular unleaded fuel. Well that pretty much covers the fully redesigned exterior, but now let's go ahead and see if they've changed as much on the inside. So Hyundai does nicely include smart entry on all but the very base model, and that also includes this really really nice looking key fob, looks straight off of a luxury brand honestly. You are also able to remote start from the Hyundai Blue Link app. So to unlock the vehicle, you have to find this little button here and press it. 
So first looking into the cabin of the new Santa Fe, as you can tell, it's got a very different look than last year. It has a lot more sophistication to the design and looks very upscale. Now of course this can come in a couple different materials. You will find cloth seating on most of the trims, but you'll get leather on the Limited and the Ultimate. It also comes in three different colors, beige, black, or gray, and that's across all of the trims. As far as the door trim, it does have those same materials, so you have really nice leather through here with contrast stitching, some fake carbon fiber trim, and everything else is nicely padded. The front two windows are one-touch automatic, and you'll also find two-person memory seats for the Ultimate only. I do also want to make special mention of this really nice looking at speaker grill that comes with the Infinity Audio System. Now we'll sample this a little later in the video, but I just want to point out that it has a really classy look that you usually don't find in mainstream vehicles. Now as far as your seats, they are 8-way power adjusting on almost all of the trims. And if you get the Ultimate, you add 4-way lumbar support with the nice feature of power thigh extension. The leather itself does feel really nice and high quality, again with color contrast stitching and perforation. So like I said, the Santa Fe has a newly upscale look, and with that look also comes more upscale materials. The highest parts of your dash are still hard touch plastic, but all the lower areas are now a soft rubberized texture with color contrast stitching. Down through here it is hard touch, but this lower area where your knees might touch is now padded leather with color contrast stitching as well. Fit and finish is also very nice. So to start up the Santa Fe on all but the base SE model, you'll just press this button. When you do a touch screen display, will fire up on all models. It's 8 inches on this Ultimate or 7 inches on the other trims. So this gauge cluster is one of my favorite parts about the new Santa Fe's cabin. You've got some analog gauges on the side, and in the middle you have this big 7 inch display. Now this does come standard on all but the very base model. What's so nice about it though is that it's reconfigurable. So you use these buttons right here, you can just cycle through several different things like your navigation, safety systems, and whatnot. Or my favorite part is that you can go down to the settings, scroll down to other, you can actually change the whole design of the system. So you can go into digital and that changes the whole look. You also will notice that when you change the drive modes as well, we can go into sport and it changes to red with a slightly different look to it as well. So overall, this is very nice for the class. In addition to that, you will also find a color heads up display. Now right now it's only showing the speed, but it is reconfigurable to show all types of things, including navigation instructions when you have that activated. Coming back to the steering, it is electric power assisted, and all models come with this attractive steering wheel design with metal, faux metal I will say, and piano black trim. It is leather wrapped on the SEL and up. Up here you've got your volume and phone controls, and I will say that these buttons are very high quality. On the other side, you've got your controls for that display and your adaptive cruise control. Up top, the window wipers are rain sensing on the Ultimate only. And then the wheel itself is manually adjusting on all trims, but it is heated on the Ultimate only. Now moving on to storage, I will say that the Santa Fe keeps up with crossovers that are a lot bigger than it. Starting out with the center console, you've got a removable tray, and then a really deep area with a felt lining at the bottom. In front of that, there's another big area here, and then there's a really deep area right here, with a Qi wireless charging pad on the bottom of it if you've got the Ultimate. 
Now, if you don't get those trims, you do still have a 12 volt outlet, a charging USB port, a regular USB port, and an aux jack. Now, the Santa Fe does still use a traditional leather wrap shifter. So you just pull back for drive, and you can bump over to the left to shift manually. When we go into reverse, this ultimate trim includes a really nice 360 degree camera with active trajectory. There are also several different views down here at the bottom so you can just cycle through different things where you can see like uh, this curb view so you don't scrape your rims or anything like that. So that's very nice. Of course the other trims do come with a regular backup camera. And the mirrors do tilt down when in reverse to help you see the parking lines. Now back behind the shifter, you do have a slew of different buttons. This one is for your electronic parking brake, and this is your brake hold feature. And then on the left side, you've got your three drive modes, Sport, Smart, and Comfort. And this turns on and off the auto start stop system. Over on the right side, you can turn off the parking sensors, and this can manually launch the 360 degree camera. Moving on to the climate, we've got the dual zone automatic setup that comes standard on the SEL Plus and up. Now, of course, your controls, they are very simple. You just have two high quality knobs here, and then all your other controls are well labeled with big buttons, so very easy to use overall. And then underneath of that, you've got your other climate controls, which are three stage heated seats on all but the very base model and then three-stage ventilated seats and the heated steering wheel, which are reserved for the ultimate only. Now let's go ahead and sample the 630-watt 12-speaker Infinity audio system. <laughs> So not only do those speaker grills look really good, but it also sounds fantastic. And this is standard on the SEL Plus and up, so you don't even have to go all the way up to this Ultimate model to get a fantastic sound system. Now we'll go ahead and move into the infotainment system. Alright, so this of course is your standard Blue Link system. It's the same as in all the other Hyundais, except you do have the latest shortcuts on both sides of the screen. Like I said, this is 8 inches. All the other trims come with a 7 inch display. Now here on the home screen, you can click on these things to expand them. So you can click on this, and you, here are your uh, radio presets along the side. Heading back to the home screen, you can click on all menus, and this pulls up all your other apps. So we'll start out with phone. This is basically just your standard affair of your contacts, like over here, and then you can quickly toggle along the side. You do also have message support where you can click on these things, have them read aloud, and then you can even reply with a couple of pre-made quick messages. However, the apps you're probably most concerned about are your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are both on board. So you just click into those. These work exactly the same as they do on every other car. It takes up the entire screen and gives you access to, most importantly, Google Maps even if you don't have built-in navigation on your Hyundai. Now this Santa Fe does also have built-in navigation. However, we don't have the SD card installed, so it's not working right now. That's pretty much the main features of Blue Link, but we will make a dedicated Tech Help video extensively covering the features at a later date. A link to that is provided in the video description. Moving on up, you will find an auto dimming mirror on the SEL Plus and up. And you do have your built in Homelink Universal Remotes and then your Blue Link controls right here. On up from that, you do have LED lighting and you have your controls for the moonroof. On this Ultimate and the Limited, it is a gigantic panoramic one 
a lot of glass. I'm not going to let that open fully because it is raining. As you can see, it is a very, very huge uh, setup. So overall, I really think that the Santa Fe's cabin is a big step up from its predecessor. You've got a lot of technology in here, as well as a really classy design and a lot of luxury features, especially here on the Ultimate trim. So overall, I'm very impressed. This car does also come with a new rear seat reminder system, which uses sensors to see if you've left somebody in the back seat. Anyways, I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason, who will finish up the rest of the cab. The back door trim of the Santa Fe is surprisingly nice. You've got a nice leather padding where your elbow will rest with stitching. Above it is also padded, and the SEL Plus and Up will get this window sunshade. Your windows are power, but they're not automatic, and the Ultimate does come with two-stage rear seat heating. You've got that nice speaker grill again back here, and you also have some bottle storage. Now in the back of the Santa Fe, you're going to find a large amount of space. You'll find 40.4 inches of legroom and 39.2 inches of headroom, which is larger than the Ford Edge and Nissan Murano. These rear seats are also really comfortable. They've got a nice perforated design, and they do also slide and recline. In the center on all Santa Fe's, you will find these nice big vents. However, you will lack climate controls even on this top Ultimate model. Instead, you get this nice bin with some storage in the bottom, as well as two smart charging USBs, which are standard on all models. We also have this 115 volt household outlet on the Ultimate. And Hyundai does provide you with a nice armrest with some cup holders. Up top, you do have a panoramic moonroof, as well as an assist grip and LED lighting. You also have a unique looking gray headliner, which is a very premium material. Now, as far as space is concerned behind Drew's position, I have plenty of it. It looks to be about a foot of leg space between my knees and the seat back, and my feet can easily slide up under the seat. Sliding over even with the seat all the way back, I still have probably six inches of leg space. So overall, the new Santa Fe's rear seat is a family hauler packed to the gills with features to keep everyone in the rear happy. The rear seats do fold 60-40 split. Just grab this handle. The tailgate on the Santa Fe is hands-free power on SCL trims and up. Inside the cargo department, you're going to find a class competitive amount at 35.9 cubic feet behind the second row seats, expanding to 71.3 cubic feet with them folded. You can fold the rear seats by using these power folding buttons down here. So just push them and it will fold flat. You do also have some underfloor storage back here as well. And I do want to mention that there is a third row option available and that is on the diesel model but that is coming uh, in about 2020. Passenger seat is 8-way power on this model. You also have a nice leather stitch dashboard, little storage here, and you do have a glove box. It's pretty decently sized, but it's not felt lined. You also have a sun visor with a mirror and light. You have to turn the light on yourself though. 
and it is uh, adjustable here and can extend out. Well guys, that's about all we have to cover up here. So let's go ahead and get to the powertrain and test drive. So in the Santa Fe, you're going to find two different engine options. This is the base option, which is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine, producing 185 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. And that's the engine you'll find on most of them at launch, but there will be a 2 liter turbo engine come in later on in the model year. Yes, and that produces 235 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. Front and all-wheel drive is available across the lineup and it is paired to an 8-speed automatic transmission. It's also worth noting that there is a diesel model which comes in 2020, but it's not available at launch. As far as your fuel economy, it is about average for the class with the 2.4 liter model with front wheel drive coming in at 22 city, 29 highway, 25 combined, while your 2 liter turbo model will reduce that to 20 city, 25 highway, 22 combined. Of course, all-wheel drive will further reduce those numbers if they're so equipped. So let's go ahead and take this for a quick spin. Now you will notice while you're at low speeds, the 360 camera does activate in drive as well, so you have a you know, good view of if you're parking or whatnot. So taking off here for the first time in the Santa Fe, uh, power delivery seems very smooth. This is the base four-cylinder engine, so it doesn't feel overwhelmingly powerful, but it feels peppy. So acceleration is very smooth. Um, the transmission shifts very nicely as well, changes out gears quickly. So our auto start stop just activated just now, so we'll see how quickly it starts back up. Oh, very good. That was very quick and smooth. That's one of the best I've ever felt. Yeah, I didn't on a, even feel that. Yeah, one of the best I've ever felt on a mainstream vehicle. And, uh, very smooth. So we just hit a little bump right there, and I will say that the ride quality is also quite refined. It this uh, it really has a solid feel to it. It it doesn't seem like a uh, I guess you could call this an entry level yeah. or you know it's a mainstream vehicle. It's not a luxury vehicle, but it has a, the solidity that is uh, uncommon in a lot of cars that cost this in this price point. And it's very quiet within the cabin. It's rainy outside, so that amplifies the road noise as well. And just cruising along here, it's pretty hushed inside the cabin. Now, as far as your steering, I'm actually surprised by how uh, heavy it feels. Not like in a bad way, but a lot of cars in this class, they have just this extremely light and sloppy steering and this actually feels really buttoned down and then it really responds quickly when you change directions. I do want to just mention just how comfortable it is to ride along in this car since most of the time you know in this type of vehicle you're probably just going to be riding down the highway doing 
uh, family trips or stuff like that and I want to say that the seats are very comfortable uh, like I said it's very hushed inside the cabin and it seems to take a bump very well so I don't see any reason why your family wouldn't be happy to ride along in this yeah, overall this is a very competent vehicle and of course it is worth remembering that Hyundai occupies a more aggressive price point than some of their rivals so really you're getting more of a car for your money than um, some of the rivals well guys we hope you enjoyed watching this in-depth look at the 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe Ultimate stay watching for a quick look at the pricing and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.